everyone, so as you can see I already have my foundation done. I'm actually doing a quick first impression on the Cover FX custom cover drops. The lighting is crazy today, I'm so sorry in advance. I've got my foundation on and my concealer, I haven't powdered yet because I did want to do some cream contouring in today's look. Down in the southern hemisphere we're heading into the warmer weather so I wanted to do a spring inspired look and I have an idea of the kind of look I want to go for, I want to do a slight pop of colour and I want really glowy skin. So I have a really glowy base on right now as you can see, I mixed my cup custom cover drops, this is such a tongue twister, I mix them with like a glowy base. You'll see more about this when this video goes up. I was at a show at New Zealand Fashion Week, if you've been following my daily vlogs you would have seen, um, I went to a little Smashbox like seminar thing and they were using these step by step contour sticks and I was like wow they actually look really good and I've owned them for like a few months now but I just haven't really tried them out, well I haven't tried them out so I'm going to do that. So there's three colours, contour, bronze and highlight. So you put the contour shade which looks like this in obviously the places you would normally contour. And if you're recreating this look at home, if you have these that's great but if you don't feel free just to contour bronze however you prefer to. I'm just going to do a little bit at first because I don't really know like how far this product goes. And then you take the bronze shade on top of that. I'm also going to put some across my nose. And then they put the highlight on straight away but I'm just going to blend mine out because I don't really know like what I'm doing to be honest. Um, and I don't want it to look muddy. So this is a round top face brush by Exo Beauty. Oh it's really easy to blend. I might have put on a little bit too much but that's okay. It's so easy to blend. The reason I didn't try these out earlier was like I see it stick like this and I assume it's going to be really dry and kind of hard to blend out but they're definitely a lot creamier than I anticipated. The bronze shade is really pretty. I'm just going to do a little bit more of the contour shade. I'm going to do a little bit of the contour shade just on the very tip of my nose. I will be highlighting this soon as well, but I like to just kind of bronze over my nose before I highlight it because it seems to work with my crooked nose shape. I don't know. I don't know why. It's just how it is. It is what it is. Okay, and then the highlight shade is just like a really light kind of yellowy color. So let's just do some dashes up on the cheekbones. I'm going to be like using powders as well in a moment, but... I don't know, we'll just see how this all looks. I'm just wiping off my brush and my tissue, just to get rid of that bronze shade. Use a fresh brush if you want, but I find usually this gets most of the product off. And then the highlight shade is very subtle. It's kind of like a natural highlighter. And I think it's matte. <laughs> I'm not as phased over the highlight shade as I am with the face products, like the I mean these products. I feel like the bronzer and the contour shades are really good but the highlight is just like meh on my skin tone but I think they do come in a set so whatever. While I'm here I got these new blushes by Stila and I just feel like they're the perfect spring colors like how pretty are these. So I'm gonna use one maybe this one it's quite a warm kind of pink. My color balance is doing crazy things I apologize. This is the Aqua Glow watercolor bra bra blah 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 blush and this is in the shade water lily have never used this before it's still got the little seal on it so when you open it it has like a little like sieve in there i have no idea how to apply this i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna use my precise blush brush by exo beauty it is a little bit dirty but we'll live i'm actually gonna take it from the top there's like a little bit on the top and i'm assuming this is quite pigmented so oh man that's very pigmented oh god what am i doing It's super watery, which I guess, you know, that's why it's called a water blush. It's very natural, like it isn't a natural colour, but the actual finish of it is very natural. Okay, and it keeps blending out and blending out and blending out. So definitely if you try this, like, don't use much because you do not need much. That tiny little amount went everywhere. Now I'm just using my foundation brush and I'm just going around the edges just to make sure everything's well blended out. 
And then for my powder, I'm using my Cover FX Pressed Powder in G30. And as you can see, I love this. And then this is a big bronzer brush by So Beauty, which I'm soon renaming to a powder brush because I use it for powder a lot more than bronzer these days. I'm just mattifying my skin a little bit. But because I used a really glowy base, it should still show through a little bit. Okay, so that is the finish of my skin now. It's still really, really glowy, which is what I want. And I will highlight more later as well, because I want a super fresh look for spring. Obviously, you can tailor whatever makeup looks I do to suit yourself, though. If you don't like a dewy look, just do a matte look instead. There's no rules. I'm going to go straight onto my eyes, because I know exactly what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing on the lips just yet. I'm actually just going to go into my shade and light palette quickly and use a mixture of these two colors just here under my eyes quickly to set underneath. You know, the concealer and everything. I haven't filmed a chit chat get ready with me in a while and I'm kind of like all over the show right now. That blush, now that I've like set powder, like a little bit of powder on top of it, it looks so natural. Like it really looks just like I'm flushed naturally. If you like natural makeup, that is a really good product. It just sinks straight in. I'm gonna use a little bit of the Skin Food Glossy Spray quickly. Just to soak up those excess powders. And then, like always, I'm using my MAC Dirty Blonde Fluid Line and then my L'Oreal Brow Pomper. I did my brows a little bit too thick, so I'm just using my LA Girl Pro Conceal just to kind of put those back in place, back where they're supposed to be. And then just blend that in with your brush. I didn't use too much powder, so it's not going to ruin the texture of my skin. Sorry if you can hear my music. I'm in a music mood. I was going to do a voiceover, um, but I felt like chatting. But I also felt like listening to music. And then brow plumper on top just to give my brows a little bit more volume and keep all the little pesky hairs where they're supposed to be. By the way, I'm totally filming some really fun tutorials soon. Like real like out there colourful ones that aren't necessarily completely wearable. Oh, I hate saying wearable. Like I always say wearable but I don't even agree myself with the word wearable. I guess it's just like who you are. Because I feel like wearable is such a like personal, sorry I've got fluff my nose. It's such a personal term, like what's wearable for me may not be wearable for other people and what's unwearable for me is some other people might wear like on a daily basis. So I feel like you kind of know what I mean by the term wearable, like I'm not trying to say like what's wearable and what's not, it's just like my definition. And if it's something you wear all the time, like kudos to you because that's awesome. I have a lot of confidence in makeup but I still feel nervous to go out of the house wearing like really crazy stuff. I shouldn't care what other people think but I just hate it when people stare at me, like I don't know, I'm the kind of person that doesn't... Funny, funnily enough because I do like meetups and stuff but I'm not the kind of person that likes being the center of attention like whenever the attention's on me I'm like Ugh. like I feel really awkward and I feel nervous when like people look at me like if too many people are looking at me once I just don't like it I was that kid that like never ever ever put my hand up in class because I hated people looking at me and I start getting all anxious and I'm like oh my god everyone's talking about me and like but yeah I love doing crazy makeup so keep an eye out for that I think they are fun to watch even if you're the kind of person that doesn't wear that kind of makeup it's just like interesting and then for those of you who love to wear like really bright old stuff out and about you'll love it hopefully <laughs> I'm just popping on a little bit of Smashbox lid primer so the first eyeshadow color I'm taking is just a pure white so this one here is white lies by makeup geek and it's just a white and then this brush here is a coastal scents eyeshadow brush and I'm just going to pack this on the lid if you want it to be super dramatic, you can actually put this on top of a white base as well and that'll make it like way more intense. But I'm just going for a kind of subtle white effect. But this lighting is all over the place, I'm so sorry. Hopefully this video comes out okay. Some people get really angry about it and they're like, just use fake lights, but I 100% prefer natural lights. Like I used artificial lighting, like a lighting setup for a while when I lived in Auckland because my room had like no natural lighting in it. Even though natural lighting is a pain in the ass, it does look better and I feel like the makeup looks true to colour a lot easier in natural lighting, which is important to me. False lighting, like artificial lighting setups seem to make me look really flat. I don't know. It's just personal preference, so that's why I don't use a lighting setup. Plus there's no room to do it. Like I'd have to pull everything in my room backwards to actually fit in lighting. So natural lighting is just, you know, it's a lot easier and I prefer the way it looks. For the most part, it cooperates, but every now and again, as you guys know, it pisses me off thoroughly. <laughs> so I'm putting a little bit of that on my inner corner as well. I'm getting quite a lot of fallout, but I'm just brushing that off as well. 
Luckily it's not a bright colour so it's pretty easy to get rid of. I'm also going to brush a little bit of that just under here, like in the beginning of the lower lash line. In the crease I'm beginning with this shade here called Orange Soda in a round top blender brush by So Beauty. This is by Anastasia Beverly Hills, this eyeshadow. And I'm just putting a decent amount of this straight into that crease area. This is just going to warm up the eye and I'm actually going to use a bit of a like orangey eyeshadow on the lid as well. I'm just buffing that underneath my eye as well. So you can see it's kind of like a light kind of pastel orange. And if you don't want too much colour, because we're going to use a pop of colour on the lower waterline. If you don't want too much colour, if you'd rather keep it a little bit more natural, neutral, just use a more browny, like warm brown. I'm then going to use Burnt Orange Matte by Anastasia Beverly Hills. And then after that, I'm going to use Ground Brown by MAC, which is a warm brown as well. So I'm first using this colour here. And this is a tapered crease brush. It's got a little bit of product on it. Already ignore that. And I'm just going to build that up a little bit in the crease, just to add a little bit of darkness. And then I'm using a tapered blender, which is a little bit smaller and that darkest brown. And I'm sure most of you would have similar colours. You don't have to use exactly what I'm using, just use whatever you have in your collection. And this is going to go on the outer kind of corner, outer V. I'm not going to put this on the lower lash line. I'm just going to leave it up top. Now you just want to kind of fade that inwards a little bit. So you can see I'm leaving on the outside, but I'm trying to blend it into the white a little bit. We're going to add the orange in there and if you don't want to use orange again just use a warm brown or something. I've used both of these colours before in tutorials on my channel but I just want to show you a couple of my favourite oranges just because. So this one here is called Vapor by Elamasca and then this one here is called Persia by Nars. I think I might use a mixture. Also MAC does one I think it's called Red Brick which is beautiful. So just use anything you want. And I've mixed both on my brush here, same brush as before and I'm just going to kind of overlap that on that brown colour and bring that in a little bit. This looks kind of complicated, but I promise it's really not. It's a lot easier than it would seem. And I'm leaving that inner part of the eye bare, like I'm just leaving that um, white. I'm so tongue-tied. Oh my god, Persia is so pretty, it's so underrated. I'm putting on just Persia, which is that darker, bolder orange. I'm kind of blending that on top of where I put that brown colour. I'm kind of making this up as I go at this point. Like, I planned to do this, but now I'm kind of just rolling with it. And then I'm just repeating the same kind of steps on the other side. So I'm putting that Persia on top of the ground brown. And into the crease a little bit. And then I'm mixing the two and bring it in a little bit. And then going into that vapor colour, the lighter kind of yellowy orange on the inner middle of the lid. I'm just taking this clean tapered crease brush, Big So Beauty, and kind of blending everything. Now I'm going to do a little winged eyeliner. I'm using Schwing. Using Schwing. Um, this is by The Balm, and I really like it. Now that that is done, I'm going to do the pop of colour on my lower lash line. I'm going for blue because blue and orange are like opposites so it really stands out. This is the Colour Show by Maybelline and it is in the shade Etita Ochi, maybe? I'm not quite sure if that's it or if it's in a different language or what, but that's what it says. <laughs> I'm actually going to pop a little bit of this on top just because it's not as opaque as I would like. This is Azure by um, Anastasia Bigley Hills. And then the trick to make it all come together is just tons of mascara. What I've been loving lately is this one, it's Charlotte Tilbury Full Fat Lashes. And I took this away traveling with me the last couple times, or three times I've been traveling. I took it to NZ Fashion Week, I took it up to Auckland when I went last time, I took it over to Sydney. I've been doing so much traveling lately. If you've been watching my vlog channel, you know all about it. Um, and I've just, yeah, been using this a lot. I really like it. It is very easy to get everywhere though, so I always take like little cotton buds with me. Here comes the sun again. But once it's on, it looks amazing. I am going to still use falsies though. See, I've already got mascara all over my inner corner. So, so I'm just going to let that dry. I'm actually going to use a different mascara on my bottom lash line because I need precision to make sure I don't get black all over that blue like I already have. This is the Clinique Bottom Lash Mascara. I love this stuff. I haven't talked about it in a while in my videos, but I still love it. I'm going to do a few layers so that my bottom lashes look really thick as well. 
excuse the box, I had these in my luggage and the box is all like bent. The actual eyelashes are fine. These are the Gold Digger by EXO Beauty. Look how pretty. I love these. These are one of my favourite pairs ever. And then I'm using the Ardell Brush On Adhesive. That's what the eye look looks like once the lashes are on as well. Okay, so now I'm going to finish off the rest of my face. I'm thinking for the lips I'll do something semi-bright. This colour is not exactly bright like I was thinking hot pink, but I'm going to try this out first. This is the Makeup Store Slim Lipstick and it's in the shade 403 and it's a matte shade. With this eye makeup, I feel like we need a really great bronzed complexion. So I'm going to use my Hourglass Bronzer. This is the Radiant Bronze Light Shade. This is a blush brush by Exo Beauty. And I am just going to pop that kind of under my cheekbones and I will contour as well. But I just want to really warm up my skin. And then I'm just going back to my Kat Von D palette and I'm going to use that middle shade in the bottom. This is the Nars Eater brush. I think you pronounce it like that, I don't know. Now, what should I highlight with? I want something really quite intense because I really want to amplify that glowy look to my skin. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with how this makeup look looks. This would look amazing on brown eyes as well. I'm going to use this Hello Light Illuminating Powder by IT Cosmetics because I haven't actually used it on video before, I don't think. And then I am using my Face Definer brush by EXO Beauty. <clears throat> The way I did my base today just looks amazing. Like I wouldn't even like I don't even have to highlight. Like look at that, but I love to look intense. <laughs> so it's just going right on top of the cheekbones, and that is a highlight and a half. And right on the tip of my nose, and then and I'm actually just going to use the edge of my camera just stopped recording. Using the edge of my brush just on the brow bone as well, just like that. Now that is a glow. I'm using a little more glossy finishing spray just to soak up any excess powder and really set the glow off. If you've got naturally oily skin you might not want to go this intense just because as your natural oils come through it could look a bit sweaty rather than glowy. This sun! I have to say I really like this makeup look as well because you would expect the orange and the blue to be way too much, but it's actually quite subtle, especially once you've got your lashes on. Because orange is quite close to brown, you know, in terms of eyeshadow, it just kind of ends up looking like a really warm brown. It's very subtle and wearable, in my opinion. And then the blue just really, like, sets it off. I feel like blue suits every eye color as well. Blue eyes, green eyes, hazel eyes, brown eyes. It just looks really, really pretty. So here is the first of probably many spring tutorials to come. This would look gorgeous with, like, a nude lipstick as well if you don't want to do too much color at once. You could ditch the blue and put like a brown or a black or something in the waterline or even just a nude and then go with a really dark vampy lip for autumn, fall, winter. I love this makeup look. I hope you guys do as well. If you recreate it, please send me photos and hashtag them at Shinixo so I can find them. It's a little close-up for you so you can see how it looks. I feel like my brows look really good today. <laughs> I hope you have an amazing day. Please thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below. Please tell me what you think of the look. Let me know if there's any requests. Just leave a message saying hello. I love hearing from you guys. And here comes the sun again. I'm going to wrap this video up. Love you guys heaps. Bye. <laughs> hey everyone. So today I'm doing another lip swatch video. I know you guys seem to enjoy these. And this one has been incredibly requested. This one plus my Kat Von D swatch video which I will do at some stage soon. I've just got to kind of get a couple more shades so once I can get my hands on them I will definitely do that for you. Today's one is on the Jeffree Star Liquid Lipsticks. Now I think you've seen me use these a couple times in my videos in the past. I actually just got sent